was younger, I thought that I had superpowers. I was explaining this to a coworker of mine a few weeks ago about how I would assign my friends a color based on what I thought their personality was, or I would listen to a song and try to describe it as a weird deep blue. He looked at me and he said, Harper, you don't have superpowers. You have synesthesia. My name is Harper Mundy, and today I want to explore with you what synesthesia is, how it happens, and the different forms that it can take. Psychology Today states that synesthesia is a neurological condition in which stimulation of one sensory or cognitive pathway leads to automatic, involuntary experiences in a second sensory or cognitive pathway. So in other words, when one sense in your brain is stimulated, another sense can be stimulated at the exact same time. So if someone experiences sound or sight, they can also experience something like taste or touch at the same time. I have something that's called chromesthesia, which is more commonly known as sound to color synesthesia. So that means when I hear a song or a person's voice, I see a color in my mind at the same time that corresponds to the sounds I'm hearing. Now, I don't see that in my mind the same way I see all of you sitting in front of me. I see it like you can see a memory. So if you close your eyes, it's like I have a memory of somebody watercolor painting that color in my mind while that song is playing. So for example, the band Camino is always light blue. The 1975 is a very light pink. John Mayer is an ambery orange color, and Ariana Grande is purple. So how does all of this work? Well, in order for us to understand how someone's brain with synesthesia works, we need to take a look at how someone's brain without synesthesia works. So in a normal brain, each sensory system is separated into distinct places, as noted by those different color blocks right there. So each sense has its own place and its own time, and it's all connected into one thing. Now, in someone's brain with synesthesia, all of those things kind of morph together a little bit. They overlap in certain ways, some more than others. The American Psychological Association says that synesthesia is biological, automatic, and unlearned. It commonly runs in families, it's more common in women than in men, and it's more common in artists than people who think more with their left brain, or logically. A neurologist named Richard E. Sidewick proposed after case studies that it's caused by the limbic system, which is the more emotional or primitive system in your brain, rather than the neocortex where higher thinking occurs. Now, there's over 80 different known types of synesthesia to this day. Synes chromesthesia, like I have, is one of the most common types, as well as this, which is graphene to color synesthesia. Now, I took a test, and this is not my primary form of synesthesia, but this is what I associate with a certain letters and numbers. Each one is assigned their own specific color. This is what's known as spatial sequence synesthesia, and it's on the more rarer side. This is when an individual senses a physical position of the objects in an ordinal list automatically and consistently knowing where each element is. So when a person with this kind of synesthesia is presented a list, like the days of the week or the months of the year, they each have a specific place in front or behind them, and they all have a specific color. This is what's known as number form synesthesia, and this is when an individual sees a mental map of numbers that automatically and involuntarily appear whenever this person is approached with a number. So if I say the number 23, it'll always appear in the exact same spot, and every person that has this kind of synesthesia has a different number form in their brain, so it's very unique to that person. Now one of the most fascinating kinds of synesthesia, and one of the most rare, is what's known as auditory tactile synesthesia. And that's when someone experiences a sound and a physical sensation on their body at the exact same time. So this lady made a nice infographic for us explaining what she feels when she hears something. Like when she hears the bass note in a song, it's like she's standing next to a huge concert speaker and she can feel it thumping in her chest. Or when she hears a high-pitched noise, she can feel pins and needles up and down her arms every single time. Now while there's a lot that we do know about synesthesia, there's still a lot that we don't know. According to the Annual Review of Psychology, synesthesia has been known about for about 200 years, but it's only in the past decade or so that substantial progress has been made in studying it empirically and understanding the mechanisms that give rise to it. This is mostly because synesthesia can be very difficult to explain because it's so personal to the person that has it. Every person's kind of synesthesia is so different, and at the time it was first recognized, people were in fear of ridicule for having this weird thing that they can't show to somebody or can't explain, and they're afraid of being called crazy. Now, I want to make this very clear that synesthesia is not a mental disorder. There's nothing wrong with the way that my brain operates. It just operates slightly differently to produce a slightly different result. So what does all of this mean? Well, what I might not have superpowers, but I do have this special unique ability that not everybody has. 
I hope today you were able to learn something new about the way that my brain works and possibly about how your brain works so that later on we can all have a more colorful conversation.